Right. I think we need to talk about the wipe situation in Once Human. There's been a ton of noise about it online and it seems like folks are pretty confused about what's staying and what's going. You're looking for answers? Don't worry. I'm here to break it down for you and clear things up. Actually, everything you need to know about the wipe is right there in the game. But first of all, just to be clear, Once Human has a seasonal wipe schedule. So it doesn't wipe every seasonal stage, but every season. I've seen a lot of people sharing inaccurate information on this topic. So to keep it clear, it's roughly six weeks. This means that every six weeks, all worlds reset, erasing all buildings, exploration progress, mystical crates, gear crates, and character levels. Players then begin anew in the next season. Each season stage lasts about one week. And during these stages, there could be one or two world wipes where worlds collapse and merge with others. This is their way of bringing players from multiple worlds together and removing those who left mid-season. However, players do not lose anything during these world mergers. They keep their houses and all the items or materials they had in storage boxes to place wherever they choose. Warbands with frontier strongholds may be the only ones affected as frontiers in a collapsing world become non-existent, requiring them to bid and fight for a new stronghold in the merged world. Now that we've got that out of the way, let me guide you to the page in-game that clearly outlines the concept of a season and what it preserved and reset during a seasonal wipe. In my case, playing in a PvP world means engaging in Stronghold Conquest. Warbands battle against each other to capture and maintain control of as many strongholds as possible in order to dominate the region. Now if you look right at the bottom part, there's also a brief note indicating that the map region belongs to the eastern section of the Nalcot continent. But we'll get to this later. Features show you what deviants and traits are currently up for grabs this season, but keep in mind they might switch it up for the next one. Now, let's discuss Season Inheritance, as it is currently the hot topic, with many players being upset about wipes and unsure of what will remain or be removed. So here's all the information you've been waiting for, right here, in a game. You retain all essential currencies such as Star Crowns and Mitsuko Marks, along with gear blueprints containing all upgrades made to them within Season. You also keep blueprint fragments, weapon attachments, mods, furniture formulas, cosmetics, character customization, building blueprints, and progress in the main and side quests. So the only thing you lose are your in-world house, gear, exploration progress, and raw materials, which can easily be gathered again in the new Season. And let's be honest, gathering materials is a breeze and shouldn't even be considered grinding in this game, as you can get thousands in just minutes. Usually in survival games, once you reach the end, that's it. So I'm really interested in seeing how these seasonal wipes can change that. I think it's pretty cool that we get to keep most of our rewards from the last season when the game resets. It makes replaying the game a lot more fun and it gives it a whole new twist that you don't see in many other survival games. Also, by adding new features every season, players can keep trying out cool stuff and stay interested in the game for a long time, if done right. Imagine if the gameplay would simply involve reaching max level, defeating bosses, and then one-shotting everything else forever. Don't think I'd enjoy that. The purpose of weekly phases is to ensure a level playing field for all players, as we're not even able to access the new resources beyond the fog of war, so everyone is roughly at the same level within the season. And trust me, whether you're playing PvP or PvE, being carried by a highly geared player is not enjoyable at all, in any game. But especially on PvP servers, by resetting the slate, even while keeping the blueprints, you can theoretically keep everyone on a relatively similar playing field. The weekly phases limit us to specific tiers by requiring certain materials to be used. Although having a 5 star legendary weapon grants an advantage, the biggest difference comes from the tiers themselves. For example, the damage or health increase from tier 1 to tier 5 is crazy. So this way, new players won't get completely discouraged or simply left behind in PvE or PvP, and the game wouldn't die off due to it being simply too difficult or near impossible to start unless you constantly get lucky with that wish machine. When it comes to building and crafting, I think it's all about trying new things. Build in new places, try out different styles, maybe make new weapons and gear, and don't forget about specializations. You only get Get five swaps per season, so why not mix it up every now and again? Maybe focus on mining and smelting this time, but next time, go all in on fuel production. Exploration progress? Let's think about it. Why do we do exploration missions in Once Human? To take a mission off the quest log? No, we do it for the blueprint we find in the mystical crates. And guess what? With seasonal wipes, you have the opportunity to obtain blueprints multiple times. Maybe even get more lucky this time and get the right fragment you need to upgrade your favorite legendary weapon. 
The long term progression definitely seems to revolve around blueprints and the eternal land. Keeping blueprints from one stage to another is amazing because it gives you a huge combat advantage from the start. And you know what? It may take multiple seasons to fully level up one legendary blueprint, but that should be the ultimate goal to strive for. Now, apart from that, it looks like every season will have different scenarios and possibly different maps. This time, we've only seen the eastern part of the Nalcot continent. Who knows where we'll end up next season, because if you go into almost any Rosetta stronghold, you can see a huge map projected on their walls. And it looks like we're currently locked into maybe a quarter of the whole continent. So I'll keep my hopes up. If the region changes every while, I'll take wipes any day or a long-term build progression. And I'm totally okay with having an entire island to myself for building. The possibilities are endless because we keep all the furniture blueprints to use in Eternal Land. So I believe maybe the seasonal wipe is just misunderstood rather than a bad thing. But I hope this clears things up. Anyway, these are just my thoughts on the seasonal wipe in Once Human. Feel free to leave a comment and share your opinions with me. Will you stick around for the next season? Hey, if you enjoyed this video and want to support my channel, drop a like and subscribe. If you want to chat with me and other members of the community or even play a few games together, be sure to join my Discord server. We've got a warband set up in a PvP server and it gets pretty intense on there. You can also drop by my Twitch live streams. I usually stream 4 days a week and once human has basically hijacked my streams. <laughs> I can't wait to hang out with you all. Thanks again and have a great day.